Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you my pinwheel topper box. Aren't they just so beautiful? I've used all of the regal, well not all of them, five of the regal colours here um, and obviously I'll be making a sixth with you guys. Um, but yeah, these are just lovely and I've got a real thing for crumb cake at the moment. Um, so yeah, you may, may notice a bit of a theme with my projects in the next sort of coming weeks is that just yeah I have I just love crumb cake and I've started using that as a base colour as well as basic white um it's just a bit different isn't it but doesn't it look so pretty with these they're really simple to make and each one holds a little mini bag of mini eggs these are my favourites they're so nice I bought a big bag full um just dig it out of my bin. This I got from one of the local supermarkets. It holds 10 of the small bags. Um, so yeah, as you can see, <laughs> they've all gone already, bar this one. Um, but yeah, they, they just sit inside nicely. And as I say, they just make a real fun gift. So I'm gonna show you how to make them. So let's pop these over to one side out of the way. So to start off with then you're going to need a piece of cardstock and your cardstock needs to measure eight and a half by six and a half centimetres or 21 and a half by 16 and a half. Let me start that again. Eight and a half by six and a half inches, 21 and a half by 16 and a half centimetres. And on the short side, which is this side, on the short side, we're going to score at one, two, four and a half, and five and a half, which will be two and a half, five, eleven and a half, and fourteen. We're going to rotate and score on the long side at two, three, five and a half and six and a half, which will be five, seven and a half, 14, and 16 and a half. Oops, nearly sent it flying. Okay, fold and burnish the score lines. And again, it's a very simple, simple box design really, but I just love the way these colours all complement each other and the way they just work together um, that is what I love most about stamping up is just the colours and the way they all work it's amazing okay so both ends are equal so it doesn't matter which end you work because we're going to do the same to both anyway you're going to have a long rectangle here and then a square we're going to cut all the way down to the square and cut it off with a slight edge all the way down to the square but we're only going to leave the square in place and cut some wedges again we're going to cut down the side exactly the same principle cut that away cut that square create some wedges okay so we're going to do exactly the same on the other end and this is why I said it's really easy because you don't have to think I've cut that the wrong end or I've cut the wrong piece off because it doesn't matter. And as I say, all four corners doing exactly the same, same principle. Okay, so when you're finished, you're left with this shape. And then you need a piece of DSP. So again, I've gone with the um, Regals. This is the new one that we will be getting now, beginning of May actually. It's not June, it is the beginning of May. Um, I'm gonna use this pattern size, so I'm just gonna burnish those edges where I've trimmed it so your DSP will go on either side it doesn't leave that up either end doesn't matter because it will fit both um, and it is two and three eighths by one and seven eighth or in centimeters it will be 6.3 by 4.8 um, 
I've had a comment on one of my videos recently regarding um, <laughs> me educating myself in terms of centimetres um, and the fact that one centimetre isn't equal to whatever an inch and a half doesn't measure one and a half inches or whatever it is. Um, I just want to point out at the moment that whenever I make a project I always make it in centimetres as well so I know that my measurements work. So for example these ones that I've made here are all out of inches. This one I made in centimetres so I know that the DSP is the correct size for the top and I know that all the measurements work. Um, as I say this one was made using centimetres including the pinwheel on the top. All of my projects that I make I use the same measurements throughout. Um, I even have the adapter here for my scoreboard that has centimetres on it so I know that I'm doing them correctly. So with regards to that message i just like to say that thank you but I am educated and I do measure my projects before I make them. Okay back to this one then. So I've put my DSP on one of the ends here and then we are simply going to put some adhesive on the tabs Oops. and fold these up like we would if we were creating a box. Okay this one, the, um, sometimes, I don't know if you guys find this, that the Seal Plus tears at my card as opposed to putting the adhesive down. I'm not quite sure on the reasonings for that. May have to just have a little chat with Stampin' Up and see why that happens. It's very strange. It doesn't happen all the time, just on occasions. Okay, so, box made up now. So, as you know, I have my shoulders here, as I call them. So... I'm just going to pop my mini, mini eggs in and they do fit. Now sometimes you'll have one that sits on top of the other that's a bit proud so you just sort of have to push them around till they fit and then closing my shoulders and then my box tucked together. They are a little bit snug in there. I can see some that are sitting together now and then I'm going to use some of the lovely braided linen trim and I simply place my box upright on there and tie a little knot on the top. I went for a knot because I figured that these actually, you could use them as favours, but they'd be ideal as well for male recipients because the colours there's nothing particularly oops i've just thrown that in the wrong place never mind um there's nothing particularly fancy about them um you know they've not got flowers or flourishes or anything massively feminine on them so i thought they could be used if i put a knot as male um a male option as well so for your pinwheel you're just going to need a little sheet of probably coordinating or the same as because this is just the reverse of this paper um, two inches by two inches or five by five centimeters you then need a ruler and a pencil and it doesn't really matter which side you draw on you can see, I didn't think you could see the pencil marks but I've just realized you can so I'm gonna have to go around with my rubber now um, but you're basically gonna draw across from one corner to the other and then and I'm only doing this by eye a small circle in the center okay can you see that small circle in the center then with your scissors you're going to cut down to the circle so not all the way obviously otherwise you just cut it into triangles all the way to that corner then with your fabulous glue dots we are going to put oops, one in the center just there and then I'm going to fold this corner over 
and I'm going to lay the point just on the outside of that circle. Okay, just like that. Turn it and do exactly the same with that one. I'm going to just grab another glue dot there, do the same with that one, and the last one tucks over here. Now there's not a lot of glue dot for that one, and so, if I can find it buried under my stuff, I've got a stapler. Now this is very old, this is from when I joined, so five years ago. Um, but I'm just going to staple the centre of it to hold everything in place. Now you might notice that your um, pinwheel arms do get squashed a little bit. I just found popping my pencil inside and rolling it against the paper seem to pop them back out. Okay, I'm going to add a couple more dimensionals to the back. Sorry, not dimensionals, glue dots. And then I'm going to stick this over the ribbon and it's actually the glue dots that are going either side of the ribbon. And then gilded gems, one of the large ones here, it just about covers the staple. Not completely, but enough. And then last but not least, so I want my rich razzleberry and I've got Pretty Perennials, beautiful, beautiful stamp set. And all I wanted was the For You um, sentiment on it, which is just here. Oh, crumbs sliding everywhere. And then I'm just going to stamp my sentiment on some crumb cake, which is, again, another reason why I love these regals, because you can stamp them onto crumb cake and they'd still look good. And then with my classic label punch, I'm going to push it right to the end because I only want a short, short piece of this. And then I'm going to put my punch down. Oh, no, don't hide. And then I just push, push this through the end and you should be able to grab the tail end here and then line it up so that you know it's where it should be and punch it out and you obviously get your smaller smaller one and then I'm just going to pop a couple of glue dots on the back there and then this is just going to sit on the bottom and there we have it there is my pinwheel topper box or boxes in regals. Aren't they gorgeous? Thanks for joining me guys. Hope to see you all again soon. Bye.